All right, here's what you're going to need. I just want to point out that these boxes came from Sherwin-Williams. Just go and ask them. They'll give it to you for free. And these packing bubbles were also free from Amazon deliveries. Okay, so first we're going to wrap and protect our paintings with a paper slip. This just involves wrapping the canvas with paper. Easy enough. So I'm gonna kind of double it, give myself some wiggle room. Just kind of eyeballing it here, folks. We're not trying to do science. We're artists. There's science involved, but when there doesn't have to be, I say choose not. Now, ideally, you want to make this look as pretty as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm actually gonna lay this face down, just like a cat. And we're just wrapping it like a little present. The gift of art. I mentioned packing tape. That's for later for the box. I didn't mention masking tape. You can use that here because it's cheaper. And I'm just taking some and kind of tacking this down. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be sealed tight. We're literally just creating a barrier between our packing materials and the nicely finished varnished painting. The low acid paper helps protect between this plastic. You never know what's gonna happen with this plastic and the surface of your painting. You know, chemical reactions gets hot in that shipping truck, who knows, okay. First painting done, painting number two. Both of these are going to the same client, so we got a twofer. Ideally, you won't crease it like that, but apparently I am a doofus. And like I said, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Nothing too fancy. Kind of center it, wrap it, tap it, flap it, just like that. Now we can get rid of this paper. Here. And we have our two mini packages. Now we need to take these boxes and kind of cut them open a little bit so that they fit around these. I'm gonna lay these face down so these are the backs of the canvas. That's convenient. Not all the time do they work out like this, but we're actually, you know, I'm actually gonna do them face to face so that if anything pierces the box, God forbid. The faces will be further from the outside of the box. We're gonna take our packaging. These are just from leftover Amazon boxes. I kind of save these whenever I get a package for this very purpose. So I don't ever have to buy any of this stuff. You gotta be resourceful. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. And all I'm gonna do is kind of put these on either side of here. And I think I'm gonna actually tape those in, give these paintings some spacing here. Yeah, I kind of like that. You gotta get creative, folks. There's no rules. You gotta use your best judgment and decide what feels safe for your darling artwork. You don't want it to get ruined in shipping. Can't always trust those characters out there. God bless the mailman, you know? But at the same time, they don't care about this stuff as much as we do. Okay, so there's kind of like our, our mini package. Oh God, don't do that, okay. Um, it won't matter, because we're gonna kind of cinch these boxes around our package. You kind of get it? So I'm gonna basically just open up this box. We might be good to go to just cut these things directly in half. So let's try that. Essentially what we're doing is making a Frankenstein box out of these boxes using one or two edges from the already constructed box as our parameters. None of this makes sense, but maybe you'll see as we go along. Less explaining, more doing. So let's set these up to the side a little bit. Usually you want like a ruler or something to measure this out, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And you know, if I make a mistake, that's on me. You can measure. Hey, we're not backed by OSHA here. Don't do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Don't do this at home. This is a how-to video, but 
Always cut toward yourself. Just kidding, don't do what I just did. I'm, <laughs> I'm a horrible role model. Okay, so now we have this box. It's kind of just open like this. And like I said, we're creating a corner as our foundation of the box. So we're just gonna take this and base our parameters around this corner. And eventually we'll just like fold the whole damn thing over top of itself. We're gonna use both boxes. I'm gonna need another fucking box. Shit. I'm gonna need to just figure this out so we're probably just gonna kind of like time lapse the rest. Something like that. Take a root box, break it down to you. A lot of the strength in this box comes from the tension of the tape and the cardboard itself. So make sure you're pulling that tape really taut around these corners. I know this doesn't look great right now, but I promise we're gonna reinforce it. And we're gonna be double checking our art inside in just a moment. Okay, so before we put this the cap on, we're gonna build a cap out of the rest of the boxes. We're going to reinforce the inside with more packing bubbles. And this is where it's really great to have actually bubble wrap, thinner stuff, because these big packing bubbles are, uh, you know, a little thicker. So it's easier to slide bubble wrap in between here. And I think I have some. Okay, I actually have some packing peanuts. Not a lot, but we're gonna ahead and shove those ones in there. just to kind of space out our shit. Because the thing is, the wood of the canvas is pretty sturdy, so I'm not too worried about supporting the edges. You saw me put some paper on the, around the corners on the other edge there. That'll help just kind of space the whole perimeter from the exterior wall of the box, and that's kind of enough to do that, so not too worried. Right now I'm just protecting the inside of our canvas from the exterior wall so that if anything, any corner is to poke through from some other box, it doesn't just totally pierce right through. This is just kind of extra precaution. I think I can actually fit a couple of these in there too. That's perfect. Maybe I'll put a couple of these in there. Some kind of perfect. Some kind of perfect. Get our corner guards. Something like that. Feeling pretty good about that. And one last thing before we seal up our box. We gotta write a little note to our client saying thank you. Chris. Thank you so much for your continuing support of my art. You are the fucking man. Love, Alex. Throw some dope stickers in there. All right, we're ready to seal this bitch up.
this part right here, it's like double layer cardboard, which is like kind of unnecessary, but it's just double protection, you know? It makes the box a little thicker and makes it uglier, but rather than cut it away, I'm just leaving it on there to be a double layer. Just tape that bitch up. It's a little bit more rigid. I feel like that's probably good enough. I think that's all my openings. It literally doesn't have to be perfect. It's more important that it is protected and secure than it looks pretty. Obviously you don't want your client thinking you're trash, so it has to look decent, but like no one's ever complained about my packaging and I do it like this every single time. And I've also never had anything damaged with this boxing method. And it's literally free packaging other than the tape, which technically that was free too because I stole it from my girlfriend. Ha ha ha, Mooch City, baby. And you know, maybe you're thinking by the time I go through a half a damn roll of packing tape, I might as well have just paid FedEx to box it up professionally for me. And you know, you can do that. That is an option for you, but this is how I do it. Um, one thing to note is if you're gonna use any boxes that are recycled, just make sure it doesn't have anything on the outside that is conflicting. Like if it contains toxic things, it has one of those symbols on it. Um, you don't wanna use that. So like if you spray paint and you wanna ship something out, something smaller in a spray paint box, you gotta cover that up and don't let them even see it because they can't see it otherwise they can't ship it for you. It's like a legal issue. Um, so I give this like a C. This isn't the best box, mostly because of this corner. It's kind of fucked up there. And there's like a bulge you can kind of see. And usually I like to give it enough width to where it's flat, but like it still stands on almost every side, except for maybe that one. And like, that's pretty much all you can ask for. There you have it. And then you take it to the post office or wherever you're gonna ship it from. Make sure you save your receipt so that you can quote your client to pay for shipping or just to give them their tracking number if you're gonna pay for shipping, which I plan to do this time around because this particular client has given me a lot of business and I just like to throw him a bone every once in a while. And this is one of those times. So anyway, I uh, hope this helped. See you next time.